The next concept we are going to talk about is generating functions. Um, well, generating functions are used to represent sequences as coefficients of formal power series. So if you have a sequence like a0, a1, a2, a3, um, possibly infinite, um, the generating function that represents the sequence is given by an infinite sum from k equals zero up to infinity uh, of a k. These are the coefficients where they correspond to uh, the values in your sequence times x to the power k. So what you do is you multiply a sub k in any of those numbers by x to the power k. So let's say eight is your 10th number in your sequence. You multiply that with x to the power 10 and you do this for all the numbers in your sequence. You add them up, you get a function in X. So that function is called the generating function of the sequence. So here are some simple examples. The generating function of the sequence, one, three, five, seven, etc. So do, these are the odd numbers. It is simply the sum for K equals zero up to infinity, two uh, K plus one, which are the odd numbers times x to the power k. Another example, 2, 0, 4, 0, 6, 0, 8, 0, etc. Let's say this is your sequence, an infinite sequence, and the generating function for this sequence would be uh, this expression here. Be careful to notice x to the power 2k, because you see some of these, well, ev every other one is zero, so you need to skip one of those um, well, if, if you expand this for k equals zero, you would get 2k plus two, that is two times x to the power two times zero. So that is one. So that is x to the power zero. Plus if you put here k equals one, then you, you, you would get 2k two plus two is four times x to the power two k which is x to the power two plus you put k equals two, two k plus two now makes six, x to the power two k is x to the power four plus uh, etc. It goes on like this. So this obviously is the generating function of this sequence. Why? Because that should be two times x to the power zero plus zero times x to the power one plus four times x to the power two, plus zero times x to the power three, and so on. You get the idea. Um, <clears throat> of course, the sequence doesn't have to be infinite. It can be, but it doesn't have to be infinite. For instance, if your sequence is only of length four, consisting of the numbers one, two, zero, and four, then the generating function of that sequence would be one times x to the power zero plus two times x to the power one plus zero times x to the power two, which doesn't appear here, plus four times x to the power three, and that's it. Well, you can see this as an infinite sequence whose values are zero beyond, the, let's say, the fourth term. So that's one way to look at this, or you can just see this as a finite sequence which doesn't make any difference. And this is the generating function. Now, when I say generating function, you have to understand that the function itself is not relevant to us in terms of its value, okay? So we are going to use generating functions for manipulations, and we are going to derive some results using generating functions, but at no point we are going to use the actual value of the function itself. Okay, so the value of the generating function itself for any x value is totally irrelevant. We are not interested in that. It says nothing to us in this context. What we are interested is in the structure and the form of the generating function. So in general, uh, re re related to this, this property here or this statement, we do not care about the convergence of the series, right? Because, well, these, these are formal power series and uh, they, they have 
convergence or divergence properties. To really work with them, you need to ascertain that they are convergent. Uh, but here, since we are not interested in the value of the function itself, we do not care about the convergence. Um, we, we will just, as I said, uh, look at the structure and the form of the function. So uh, we are not really look at whether it converges for what value, etc. We don't care about that. For instance, the generating function of the sequence consisting of all ones, so one, 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 etc. Simply, one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the power of four plus etc. up to infinity. Simply, the the power series, which is the sum of x to the power k for k equals zero up to infinity. Now we know that this is equal to one over one minus x for the absolute value of x strictly less than one, right? This is the result we know from calculus or analysis. But in this context, in, in, in terms of uh, combinatorics, we are not really interested in this. Um, we are not interested in the convergence region, let's say, um, as long as for some x values, the equality is valid, that's fine for us. So we are going to really, instead of this, we are going to work with this in, in most cases because that's where the, the power of generating functions uh, is really observed. Now, to demonstrate the usefulness of generating functions and how to approach a, a problem using generating functions, we are going to use the, the so-called coin problem or change problem that is described by the Hungarian famous mathematician, George Polya in a paper he wrote in 1956. Now this is quite educational that, that people have been including this in their textbooks, in their videos, etc. And you can find a lot of resources that explain this. So if you're not satisfied with my explanation, go ahead and search this. There are many other explanations or, uh, or some papers or books or videos on this. So this is one of the most famous problems that you can see uh, that motivates the use of generating functions. So what is the problem here? Suppose that we have, uh, we would like to pay 50 cents. And the, the no denominations we can use are pennies, which are worth one cent and nickels, which are worth five cents, dimes, which are worth 10, quarters, 25, and half dollar, 50 cents. So the question is, how many ways can I do this differently? Okay, so for instance, just 50 by itself is one way to do this, or 25, 25 together is another way or maybe you can use five tenths, right? Or maybe you can use a 25 uh, and then maybe one ten, two fives and five ones, right? The question is how many such uh, solutions are there? How many such uh, uh, combinations are there, let's say? Um, but obviously, this looks like it's it's um, it, it could be a lot to enumerate by hand, and it's not really easy to to come up with a pattern. And furthermore, maybe you can do it by hand using like a number with fifty cents. But what what if you are asked the same question with like uh, fifty dollars? So that makes five thousand cents then that would be quite cumbersome. So we are going to look at this problem and we are going to actually give a formulation uh, to this problem that will lead us to generating functions. <laughs> 